So let's look at strings in C. A string is nothing but a sequence of characters. So this is a string, right? So now let's look at how do you do string processing? That is reading strings, writing strings. How do you modify strings, compare strings? So that's what is going to be the focus of this chapter. So there is no data type called string in C, right? So a string is just a character array. So if you look at it, there is a character array of 10 characters here, right? It allocates 10 bytes of memory. You can store a string like this, H-E-L-L-O. So here is the how it stores in the memory. H in one byte, E in one byte, L in one byte, L in one byte, O in one byte, right? This is how hello gets stored. So every string has a terminating character, which is a null character. The ASCII value of this character is zero right so that's the last character which indicates to the c program that this is where the string ends so h e l l o and then there is a backslash zero here so to store this hello it requires six characters now a string can be initialized in two ways here when you look at it there is a character array so you don't have to give the size because c can count it h e l l o and the backslash zero so totally six bytes of memory will be allocated for this or it can also be initialized. We have seen this earlier. H as an individual character, E as an individual, L as an individual, L as an individual and O as an individual, right? So each character can be stored as well. So both these are acceptable forms of initialization. So now let's write a program and see using strings. So strings can be directly initialized like this. There is a character array where h e l l o this is a string that is there so hello can be initialized directly like this right so here the bytes of memory that will be allocated will be calculated h one byte two bytes three bytes four bytes five bytes so when double quotes are used string automatically appends a null character at the end this is the string terminating character this is how c knows that this string ends in null character so this is where the string ends. C finds it out through this, right? So, character CH is equal to hello. So, the size will be computed as H E L L O and then the size for the backslash zero. The other way we have seen it earlier, right? So, we are declaring a character array. Each and every character, H E L L O, each character is individually initialized, right? In this case, five bytes of memory will be allocated for this because we have we have clearly told the compiler saying that each and every character in this array is going to be like this right so now let's write a program to check this out so let's look at this in python tutor character ch is equal to hello and then we have initialized it in this way right so if you look at it for this it allocates six bytes of memory and this is how it gets stored h e l l o and then the null character which is the terminating character but in the second case, it stores as only H E L L O. There is no null character here. So this is how it stores in the memory. Out. So let's look at this as a program. Hello and H E L L O. And we are printing the size of C and size of D. Let me run this program. So this ideally should be 6. This should be 5. So as you can see, for this, the size of C is 6 because there is a backslash 0. Here it is a 5. So in this the only difference is if we display this hello, this hello has a termination character that is the backslash 0 is here. So it would print hello. But in this case if we are trying to display this, it there is no termination character after this. So the results are not predictable. We will see that shortly. So we have seen earlier that uh, percentage D is for integer, percentage C is for character, percentage F is for float. To actually print this entire string which is stored in C, uh, what we can use is a percentage S. Percentage S stands for uh, strings, right? So we have to give the name of the array or the base address. So from here, it will start printing the hello, right? So as I said earlier, this has a backslash zero, so it will print it. In this particular case, there is no backslash zero at the end. These are individually initialized values. So it will print hello and then whatever is there in the memory after that, it will print the garbage values, right? So let's run this program. So here you see that uh, six and five are displayed as the size. 
after that c is hello so this is exactly getting printed but d is it's saying hello hello so here actually h e l l o is getting printed after that whatever is there in the memory it's printing till it sees the ascii zero in the memory these characters are there um so it's printing this hello as well so in this particular case so this even though it's a right form of initialization right unless there is a backslash zero it will not print the right value so to fix it we have to make a slight change we have introduced a zero here at the end right so if you introduce a zero what happens in this case is uh, it actually we are inserting the termination character so zero is the null character that we talked about so here now what will happen is hello will get printed for the first one hello with small zero will be printed there won't be any extra characters printed let's run this so you see 6 and 6 and then the hello followed by um this hello as well the smaller lower case hello let me just move it up little below so d is also hello so if you look at this program so 6 and 6 both are six characters now c is hello d is also hello now this becomes the string termination character so let's look at how to read a string from the user and print a string we already saw how to print a string so scan of percentages ch ch is the character raise this one so ch right so why there is no ampersand here we had an ampersand in scan of for integer character float and others right so why there is no ampersand here earlier when we discussed arrays uh, we looked at how the name of the array is equivalent to the base address of the first element that is base address of the first element of the array so this is same as the name of the array right so that's why you see that instead of giving ampersand ch of 0 we are just giving a ch even if you give ampersand ch of 0 the result would be the same here so now let's run this program so i need to give a word so i'll give a word and it gets printed right so this is how you print a word now there are certain delimiters based on which percentages will stop for example a tab character a new line character a space character so it will read and assign the words uh, till it reaches a delimiter so in this program so if i type today is the best day right so in this case space is a delimiter so it will not read this entire sentence it will just read the word so only today will be stored in ch so if you look at it only today gets stored rest of it is ignored right so there is a way to read the entire line um, there are actually two ways so there is a quick change made in this line so here if you see you have the caret followed by backslash n what it says is until you see this character of backslash n read all the characters right so now backslash n is the new line character so now it will read the entire line so let's run this program so now i'm going to type today is the best day so the entire line gets printed here so this is how you can read an entire line there is again another way instead of this complex syntax there is another way to read strings because string processing is very common in c so there is another way to do it which is using the gets library function let's look at that in action so gets is the other option in gets you can read the entire string and print it so this will read the entire line so now if you see you will see that the entire line is getting read here and printed so there is a warning saying gets is dangerous so go ahead i mean we can use gets i don't think it's a problem it's just that even beyond the 20 bytes if the entire line is read gets will still try to write it and it might crash the program that's why you say that see this error so similar to gets you have a puts so puts will print whatever is there in the character array let's run this so here let me give so you see that printf percentages backslash and prints that again puts of ch again displays the entire sentence so there are many string functions available given that string processing or text processing is very very popular and required in lot of programs so there are many string functions available so here you would see a list of string functions which are most popularly used like string length to find the length of the string 
string copy to copy s2 to s1 right the destination uh, is the first thing and source is the second s1 is the destination s to the source so it will copy the string to the string so string and copy copy only n characters required so if it is five characters it will copy only five string compare to compare two strings to find if they are equal or unequal string compare ignoring case for example hello in lower case and hello in upper case if you want to compare it so if it is true then it returns as um, zero right i mean if both are equal it returns as zero otherwise it returns whichever is the string which is greater right so very similarly you have many many string functions uh, you should try using these functions and then try small programs uh, this would help you really uh, getting adept with the string programming so now let's look at this program right so strings can be used overwritten right so it is not string is going to be only a read only given that it is a character array you can overwrite it so first we are storing hello so ch of 2 the second index right i am changing it to w so instead of index being l changing it to w that you can see here now the fourth one instead of o i am changing it to k and now if you print it you will see h e w l k that's what you see on the screen right so this is one possibility so i want you all to understand that string is not only read only you can change any element of an array similar to how you made a change to the integer arrays right so that's in summary for strings now let's look at a program right so i'm um, going to write this program so this program is to reverse a string so we have a string called s where hello is stored now i'm going to reverse it and store it in an array called d right so now first thing in line 9 and 10 that you see is to count the number of characters which are there in the hello string right so there are uh, five characters totally h e l l o which is the number of characters which are there so this loop actually helps find it so till it reaches backslash 0 it does the count is equal to count plus 1 so when it completes count is 5 you see it on the right side here that after the begin and end you see that the count is 5 now end is the position from where we are going to copy so end is count minus 1 so it points to the letter o in the hello string right which is the fourth index so from there we are going to copy it to the destination so begin is going to be 0 so we are going to copy the o from the fourth index to in the destination string we are going to store it in an index called begin which will initially start with 0 right so now begin starts at 0 so from end you are going to copy that character right so from s of 4 it's going to copy to d of 0 right and after that is done we'll decrement end so that end points to 3 and begin will be incremented in the loop so that it points to 1 so essentially what happens is we will take one character at a time from the s array and we will copy into the d array and we will increment one character here at a time right so the begin loop will increment one by one and the end will reduce one by one so now you see that o is copied now l is copied uh, d of begin is actually l is copied so now n becomes two yes begin becomes 2 it gets copied n becomes 1 begin is 3 n becomes 0 begin is 4 so once all the four elements are copied right now it comes out of the loop because begin and count are the same at the end we need to add the termination character so we add that here so that's how the reversal of the string is being done in this loop now if you print that character it is going to print that it is a hellos in the reverse order so you see it on the top right highlighted so this is how string reversal is done right this is a string reversal program so now this helps understand how string string functions are being processed i uh, hope this exercise was pretty helpful